The other story in Baltimore is the federal court conviction of two city police officers, Detectives Daniel Hersel and Marcus Taylor, in a startling corruption scandal. Six other officers have already pleaded guilty. For the details, we're joined by Jane Miller, the lead investigative reporter for WBAL-TV in Baltimore. She's covered this story from the beginning. Uh, Jane, thanks so much for joining us. The charges in the court yesterday were racketeering, racketeering conspiracy and robbery, but that really doesn't do, uh, t tell, give us the full breadth of what these guys did. What did they do? Well, first of all, they were members of a very elite unit in the Baltimore Police Department, uh, which was called the Gun Trace Task Force, GTTF, as it was known. They were tasked with the responsibility of getting illegal guns off the street. And as such, testimony showed in the case, they were given quite a bit of latitude and leeway to operate citywide. Um, it, it, the testimony in this case exposed a real underbelly of that kind of policing with the tactics they used to chase people, to target people. The bottom line of the way they operated illegally in this case was that they would target particularly drug dealers because they knew drug dealers had cash. They would use their police power to get search warrants, police power to enter properties, police power to arrest people, detain people, um, get their address, go to their houses. But they would target these folks and then they would steal from them. They wouldn't steal everything. I think that was a very important part of this scheme. They would, for example, in one of the cases in which uh, one of the two yesterday was convicted on the robbery count, involves a drug dealer who had, says, he testified he had in his house $300,000 and 10 kilos of drugs. The police targeted him. They went into his house, uh, members of the gun trace task force. He, they allegedly took $200,000, submitted $100,000 as evidence to make it all look legit, and submitted eight and a half kilos of the drugs. So what's missing? $200,000 and, and a kilo and a half of drugs. That was the basic MO of this scheme, was to use their power under the badge. They, didn't, they weren't uniform, but they did have police vests on most of the time. Um, but to use their power to target people for the purpose of enriching themselves. And they were doing this while the Justice Department was investigating the, the, uh, the Baltimore City right Police. Right under the nose. And, uh, that is correct. With this amount That's of right. this sort of brazen corruption now exposed, what's been the reaction from the mayor and the police department? Well, we just have a new police commissioner um, that, that took office just a couple of weeks ago. He's, he's designated to be the next police commissioner. And on Friday, he announced a series of changes, um, a new corruption unit to look at some of the names that have been dropped in, in testimony in the case that weren't charged in the case. He's looking at an overtime. The, the overtime fraud in this case was staggering in, in the ease with which these officers and detectives were able to steal overtime, in, able to cheat without supervision, without anybody blowing the whistle on them. Um, so he's forming a new overtime abuse unit. But I think beyond those those specific changes. The real debate that's going on now in Baltimore is whether there needs to be an entirely different structure of the Baltimore Police Department. I'm just doing a story today, for example, with a key city council member in Baltimore that's looking at Los Angeles, the model in, uh, in Los Angeles, where the police department is under the control of a board of commissioners, which also has the inspector general so that police don't investigate themselves. And that is a, that's the kind of debate that, is, that we're seeing now in Baltimore and I think will become stronger as we go forward. We still have a ways to go in this case, according to the FBI. In her testimony last week, before the jury's verdict in this case, um, she made it clear that the investigation is ongoing. Last night, the acting U.S. attorney, after the guilty verdicts in the Herschel and Taylor case, um, cases, said that, he said, we're not going to tell you what we're doing but um, indicated as well that they are continuing to follow leads in the case. So this, we may still have some, some ground to cover in this particular case. And this has tainted now some prosecution, some cases that are, were being prosecuted, they're being thrown out. Um, you've also got the- both, uh, both, both city, both local and federal. There's a federal case, drug case, where two men were just released from prison. Um, well, one was still in prison, one was out, but um, their sentence is vacated because they were prosecuted federally all the way back in 2010 in a case where we now know the drugs were planted. So yes, it, it's mostly state cases that have been tainted by the actions of these officers, but there are also federal cases that are being reviewed as well. You've got the police department trying to repair the damage from the Freddie Gray uh, case in, uh, a couple of years back. Uh, they're 
fighting last year. They had the highest per capita murder rate in the uh, in the city's history. What's this now done to the relationship between the police and the community? Well, first of all, I want to add that we had a homicide in Baltimore this afternoon, and it was the first one in 10 days. And in a city like Baltimore that has a very high rate of gun violence, um, th that has been a welcome relief. Everybody hopes it's not an anomaly. There's a lot of work that's going on um, really citywide with different agencies and communities, et cetera, to really try to bring down the rate of violence. I think the, the best part of the federal case is that it brings into the open and gives legitimacy to the complaints of many people in communities in Baltimore that have long argued and complained that police about police tactics, about police stealing from them, about planting drugs. This federal case put all in one place allegations from drug dealers and from convicted police officers. That's the most important part of this case, is that four of the convicted gun squad members testified for the government, which is where all these revelations came from of the activities of this unit. So in the end, you know, transparency is a good thing. And at least this case has brought legitimacy and into the public eye, really the underbelly of policing. Jane Miller of WBAL-TV in Baltimore, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, John.